Uh, you know, when we put this technology in the consumer's hands for the first time, we said, we have a great way to wake you up feeling better. Um, some of them came back and said, yes, absolutely, you do, this is great. And most people said, wait a minute, what's this deep sleep thing? What's this REM sleep thing? What does all this data mean? One, am I normal? And two, can I do anything about it if I'm not? And then you start getting to the people who say, well, if I am normal, how do I get super normal? Um, so, you know, we started learning from that experience of people are really curious about sleep. We have the opportunity for the first time to open up like what's actually happening on a night-to-night -night basis. Uh, so we've, we've taken the platform a lot further than just we want to wake you up because honestly, uh, that's a feature that's great for a, a select group of people, but there's a lot more power to, to give people information about a third of their lives that they can't know about other ones. Very limited, pretty much, to what you can fit on the forehead. And if, you, if I had a central pad, you could see it's, it's it covers up a good majority of, of the forehead. I mean, you can slide it back and forth a little bit, up and down a little bit. We haven't find you know, we found huge differences in terms of uh, accuracy of the ability of doing that. I do have one night that I recorded maybe a year and a half ago where I had shaved my head for Halloween and I had three zeros. I had one here, one here, one here. Um, the one up here worked a lot better. This one did okay. This one didn't do so well. Uh, and I'm guessing it had to do with a lot of that health activity that was generated in the back of the brain that our neural network just doesn't know anything about. So it's a matter of interpreting the signal, right? Absolutely. And do we get a lot of artifacts? Uh, we, we, we get plenty of artifacts, and I'm, I, I'm, it's one of those, another one of those places where I'm really impressed with the neural network that's able to kind of work itself through a lot of that artifact. The, the picture I saw that, that, that I showed of the, the raw data is filtered uh, very heavily, even from the raw signal that the neural network gives you. Um, so it's, it's pretty rough, robust in terms of like GSR and you know, that sort of thing. Uh, it varies quite a bit. The one thing I, I can tell you for sure is if you wake up out of deep sleep and it's all been here, you are obliterated. Uh, that's the experience of when you wake up and you feel like you can't think, you don't want to move, you'd rather just go back to sleep. That's, that's usually going to be happening in that deep sleep, this heavy sleep inertia. That's when we say sleep inertia, it's that period of time when you're groggy. You wake up out of deep sleep, it could be hours before you're functioning at a normal level. Um, but waking up out of, out of transition is usually the best hope. So like light sleep or long sleep, vice versa, uh, is considered an optimal way of reaching peak performance pretty quickly. So ZQ is a, a summary measure that we use. It's uh, made up of total sleep time, uh, and it's about 75%, 75% how much total sleep you got. Uh, and you get some bonus points for getting REM sleep, deep sleep, and we take some points away for uh, the amount that you're awake during the night. So if you wake up a lot, but if you're awake for big chunks, we'll, we'll pull some points out. The idea there is to, to give you uh, a chance to wake up in the morning and see a single number uh, that isn't solely dependent on I went to bed at this time and got up this time. Um, so it, it's really consumer oriented. This is not like a scientifically validated uh, you know, measure for sleep quality. It is a way for you to see like quickly, you know, I got an 80 last night, that's good for me, I'm going to be good today. Or I got a 40 last night and I am going to be freaking miserable unless I take a nap sometime. We have a full OpenZO uh, platform, so we have a light API, and we have a couple of uh, libraries for increased access. So we have a raw data library, so you can get that 128 hertz information on the serial port out of the back of the base station. Mm -hmm. That um, is all the questions. Yeah, and, yeah. and, and we, have, uh, uh, we have an open, so the SD card actually has encrypted data on it normally. We have an, an, an open uh, initiative to allow you to have that encrypted, and so you can work uh, on your desktop. There are large variations in the amount of REM sleep, light sleep, deep sleep that people get. Um, two major factors that influence that are age and gender. Um, as you get older, you get less deep sleep. Um, and women tend to get more deep sleep. And then in our database, we're finding slightly less REM sleep. Um, the deep sleep thing, uh, I'll just cover right now. It, 
As you're getting older, it could be the reduced uh, brain mass and or less concerted activity of those neurons all dying at the same time. But if you look at the rules really closely for scoring deep sleep, it's actually based on the amplitude. But that doesn't mean that older people aren't getting slow waves. It just means they don't get as big. Um, so unclear whether it's truly meaningful. And the difference between men and women on deep sleep, women have thinner skulls. And so it might look like they're getting more deep sleep because the signals are actually getting through the skull easier. So it looks like it's a higher amplitude. Um, REM sleep, huge differences. And they are there are many uh, factors that can play into that that are incredibly meaningful. Uh, one of the biggest ones is uh, depression is linked with uh, an overactive kind of REM state. So you know people with excessive REM, and I'm talking like a lot of them, uh, tend to have uh, anxiety or, or depression issues that can be solved through uh, medication.